Hi everyone, so uh, I'm, my name is Sila and I am one of your studio hosts at Anything Gray Farms. Today I am going to show you how I paint in Photoshop. Uh, you can use any art program you're familiar with or if you're a traditional artist but can't get access to the materials right now, you can still get some useful tips or use a free program to compose your piece before you put it to paper or canvas. First though, I want to show you some of the great resources that we have at Anything. So uh, one, of the, one of the sites that I want to show you is called Creative Bug. Uh, you can find it if you go to anythinglibraries.org. You just go up to our research and online learning. We're gonna scroll down to Creative Bug right here. And it's a great resource to show you all different kinds of art classes, craft classes, uh, just needs your library card. Um, it does have some classes on Photoshop as well. Uh, and I would just highly recommend using all of our resources for sure. But this one is particularly good for some at home crafts. So to get started with Photoshop, uh, what I'm going to use is a Wacom drawing tablet. It connects to the computer and then you can just use it as a drawing surface. You can also use a mouse. A lot of people, a lot of good artists out there have made some really lovely pieces of work with just a mouse and a lot of patience. Um, so what I'm gonna do is demonstrate a still life using some fruit that I picked up from the grocery store. Remember to wash your fruit and wash your hands for 20 seconds under warm water. And what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go over a black plum, mostly because I just love this shade of red right here. It's just such a lovely hue, and I'm excited to get started. Okay, so we're in Photoshop, and as you can see, I've taken a photo of the plum that I'm gonna be working on. I have it, both the photo reference and the live image as well. Uh, photo references are great, but seeing things live really helps you to better understand a three-dimensional shape that you're going to translate into the second dimension, drawing it, painting it, so on and so forth. Um, so when you're starting out, uh, you usually want to work with simpler shapes. Uh, if you're new to art, simpler is the better way to go. If you do go too complicated, you're going to frustrate yourself, especially when you're working with a new program like Photoshop. Uh, but don't worry, if you're a Photoshop newbie, uh, I'm only going to go into some really basic stuff. Uh, first, we're going to make a new canvas, and it's okay if the, uh, the Photoshop, the Photoshop, looks different, uh, if yours looks different than mine. I've changed some things around, but don't even worry about it. We're not going to stress. This is a, a low stress environment. So, okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go up to File, and then click on New, and we're just gonna do an 8.5 by 11. You can change your dimensions to whatever you see fit. Uh, we mostly just want to make sure that our resolution is at least at 300 and that our color mode is in RGB. And then we're just gonna go ahead and hit OK. I'm gonna hit Cancel because I already made a canvas for us. And here we are. So the first thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna be down in layers, which your layer panel might be somewhere else than mine is. That's totally fine. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna start with our layers. We don't ever want to draw on this background layer. We're gonna leave that alone. So we're gonna go down to this little new page icon and we're gonna create a new layer. Uh, so now we have our layer and we're on a black color right over here. You can change your colors to whatever you see fit. Uh, we're going to stick with black though. So I'm going to start drawing and as you see these brush strokes are just they're large, they're clunky, they're no fun. We don't want that. So the way to change that is you're going to go up here and what this little button is going to do is it allows you to taper based on the pressure that you're putting on your pen. But that just does your basic tapering. We also want to change the opacity of what pressure we're using. So we're gonna go up to this little button, which allows you to use pressure for opacity as well. So you can see we have this really nice dark to light, light to dark 
going on as you would with a traditional art medium. We're going to delete this. And by the way, we're on the brush tool. Uh, we're on a hard, hard brush. But you can also do a soft brush, which is kind of like an airbrush kind of kind of effect going on, which I would usually use for shadows, for lighter, uh, lighter uh, in pressure, softer colors, softer lighting, that kind of stuff. So we're going to take our layer and we're going to start, we're going to start doing some sketches. I'm going to go back to my hard brush and we've got our photo right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my brush size a little smaller using the bracket keys on my keyboard. So you can do small brush, large brush, big brush, whatsoever. But we're going to stick pretty small. And we're just going to work on our photo or work on our live fruit. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty happy with that. So, as you'll see, I've drawn this in a, in a very sketchy, very stylized kind of manner. All of these little marks are just letting me know what I'm, letting me know what I'm seeing. So there's this highlight mark, but there's also this big mark that I'm going to be using to let, to remind myself that I have some really nice reds going on in there. Um, I've also let myself know where the direction of the sun is, uh, where the direction of the, the, the lighting source is, um, and provided a little, little bit of a shadow. So now we can just go right into the painting. And you can, you can put yourself, uh, put a, uh, a, a horizontal surface, a table surface behind your picture if you so, if you so desire it. Um, I could, I could do it. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to move this up a little further and we're going to be working on top of our sketch layer because we want this kind of painterly effect. So I'm going to make a new layer. We're going to leave it on top of this sketch layer. If you want to make a kind of a table surface, you can make a new layer. You're going to click and drag it below the sketch layer and I'm on the brush tool and I can just drag a straight line across. How I did that is I just, as I was dragging my pen, if you don't hold this, the shift key, this is what's going to happen. If you hold shift, it'll go straight down. And then we'll just erase the table from behind it. I think that's a little high, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to scoot it on down a little bit. And then I'm using a lot of shortcut keys. Um, it's just, it makes working with programs faster. Um, so E for eraser, B as in boy for brush, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So now we're going to get into the color, color theory, which is one of my favorites. Um, I'm going to be picking colors off of our plum over here. And you can do that using the eyedropper tool. But what I usually do is if I hold alt, you see how my mouse changed to the, an eyedropper. Now I can pick whatever colors I want and you can see the colors changing over here in the color, uh, color menu. So we're going to pick some colors, go back in, over into our first picture and we're going to make some color swatches. And I just like to do this kind of picking and choosing colors that are all over and making sure that we get the darks, the lights, the nuances of all this color happening. Because this is this is a black plum, but looking at the colors I'm picking, is there any real black in there? That's pretty dark, but that's still a, a purple. Um, so you also want to try having just some fun with your colors. You want to romanticize your colors a little bit uh, to make them organic and make them just 
lovely. You could you could also not pick any of these colors. You could do a green plum or uh, just have fun with the values and with the hues. Okay, so I've got my colors here and not, I didn't pick all the colors of the plum because we're not going for a photorealism look. We're going to go for some painterly, painterly things going on. So what we're going to do now that we have our nice color swatches and we're not going to use all these colors. Uh, we're just going to pick and choose and paint them on our little plum here and work with it going forward. So what I would start with is we're going to make a new layer. We're going to label this one painting. And I am going to select, let's do this nice purple here. And it's going to look pretty dark. I'm just going to swath it on. Usually with traditional art, you want to work from lightest to darkest. Uh, and you can definitely do that here too. Um, I tend to work digitally going from dark to light or uh, from objects that are further away from me to objects that are closer. So I'm just gonna fill this in, fill this shape in. Oop. Now you can't even see your sketch anymore. So how we fix that, we could not, we could leave it as is, we could zoom in and you can kind of see some black going on in there. At this point we can grab our bright kind of pink and start putting that on as well. And you can see that my brush is still has that opacity layer on there. So that's why I'm getting this really nice kind of shading going on. And we are still working with a round brush. So it creates that round shape. But another thing that we can do is if you go into window and go on to uh, brush settings, it'll open up this whole dialog box here. And this is fun because you can change the shape of your brush over here in this little box. So we can grab onto a circle and just squish it. So it makes this shape instead. And we can also, if we click on the arrow, we can change the angle of it. So it makes what, it, it, it makes what, uh, a shape that kind of mimics a natural brush, a traditional art brush. So we're gonna play with this tilted oval shape and see what it looks like. I'm gonna grab some more colors, kind of work off of our photo reference and start doing some painting around what we see. So what I'm doing as I'm painting is that our colors that we've picked in the swatch here, they're starting to get mixed. And that's what we want. That's what we're going for. Um, so now that as our colors start to begin mix, be, become mixed, mixed um, if we hold the Alt key like we did before, our tool becomes the eyedropper again. And we can actually pick colors that we're mixing a lot like when you're mixing paint. So what I'm doing is I'm turning off our sketch layer just to just to take a look and see what I'm doing. Um, we could also drag this above, but I I personally like a messy sketch. Um, so I kind of like this effect that, I, that I'm going with, um, but you can definitely lean into whatever style you want to go for.
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I think, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I can definitely just keep on going and just be going straight into the details and spend pretty much all day rendering this out. Um, which, don't get me wrong, is fun, but I hope this really inspired you to try something new, to open up a new program and fiddle around with it, just to just to have fun, to play with it and see what you can make. Um, I uh, it's been it's been a f a fun, it's been a blast, uh, and I really encourage you to use the library's resources. We're here for you, so. Uh, go ahead and open up Creative Bug, take a class, and be creative. Uh, it's been great, and I really hope to, to see you soon. Have a good one.